Hi, my name is Kat and you're watching Kat Rose Astrology. And today I've got a video about Saturn in Pisces in aspect to all of the traditional natal planets. Uh, so we're going to go through each um, aspect one by one, each planet one by one. Um, frankly, because everyone's done the Saturn in Pisces video already, uh, you might have even heard videos going through um, Saturn and Pisces for your rising sign. But what I really like to do with these bigger transits is to have a look at what it means if Saturn, for example, Saturn and Pisces is an aspect to one of your natal planets, because that is really worth paying attention to. And we can do that. That's what we'll do today. So I'm going to start sharing my screen just to show you. Okay, so I just have Saturn up there in the screen right now, Saturn and Pisces, just so you remember the dates. Saturn enters Pisces March 7th and will be there um, on and off a little bit until February 13th, 2026. So we've got some time. We're going to make uh, good friends with Saturn and Pisces. Let's start with aspects to the sun. So I'm going to start with Saturn making a positive aspect to your natal sun. So that will mean that you have a sun in the water signs. So Cancer or Scorpio, Saturn will be making a trine to those signs. Um, you might also have Saturn in Earth signs. But I'm going to say, barring Virgo, um, that will be an opposition which is thought of as a difficult transit. What we're looking at now is Saturn making sextiles to those signs and then trines to those signs. So you have Saturn in Taurus, Cancer, Scorpio. Sorry, if you have the Sun. If you have the sun in Taurus, Cancer, Scorpio, Capricorn, what you can expect is achieving goals long term. This is really nice for uh, goal achieving, doing the hard work that that requires. Reflecting, it can reflect positive but quite serious relationships with superiors, men in general, but, um, you know, like authority figures effectively guidance from elders and authority figures. So meeting somebody, um, kind of like a mental figure, uh, even if they are kind of like stern and there's like some harsh medicine involved, this can be, you know, like being the kind of Gandalf figures in our life. That's what this can look like. It can also look like promotion or extra responsibilities at work. All right, now let's take a look at the more difficult aspects that Saturn could make to your natal sun. So that would be if you have the sun in Gemini, in Sagittarius or in Virgo because here Saturn is making squares to those places um, and in opposition to Virgo. So if you're, if you're sun in any of those signs, um, your ego can really take a hit. Uh, this can reflect as depression, as a lack of willpower, a lack of kind of get up and go. Our sense of meaning and purpose and drive can really be diminished at this time. We may also notice a stronger or louder inner critic at this time. Um, we may be confronted by heavy burdens or responsibilities. And effectively, we might just witness in our lives a bit of a harder time for people in authority, particularly father figures um, or like bosses at work. They might be going through some difficult stuff. So that's those are some thoughts about Saturn in aspect to natal sun. All right, now we're going to have a look at Saturn in aspect to natal moon. So again, we're going to start with those easier places we've got the water signs and the earth signs barring virgo so if you've got the moon in any of these places you are going to notice a greater sense of emotional resilience we're more strong and able to deal with the um again the hardships of life we might be that sh um that shoulder to cry on for others being kind of a stable rock and we might see that people are kind of seeking us out for emotional support can also be reflected in a, a greater sense of loyalty and like protection, like looking out for your friends, for your loved ones, for your kids. Um, we might notice a sense of increased nostalgia, a really nice time for just like looking back um, over different parts of our lives and, um, you know, blast from the past, something from our past um, making its way back into our lives. And it's a really great time for therapy as well, just doing some of that like harder inner work and reflecting on some past traumas and past experiences. Now, if your moon is in the difficult, well, I say difficult, the difficult places um, to make an aspect to Saturn, which will be mutable signs. So making, oh, and I didn't, <laughs> made a mistake. I've missed out 
what if you have sun conjunct your Saturn? Um, consider that in in our kind of like positive camp, and consider the Saturn conjunct Moon also in the positive camp. Generally speaking, it's a blending. It can kind of go either way, effectively. Anyway, Moon in the mutable signs uh, can be difficult when it comes to issues regarding mothers uh, in your life. You as a mother as well. Um, challenges, so restrictions, burdens, responsibilities that we um, that kind of get us down in some way can also re be reflected in health issues. So always with the, these kinds of aspects to our moon from Saturn, just making sure that we're doing what we can to take care of our health and um, supporting that can also just be feeling under the weather, feeling a bit down, um, less like the sun where we're like lacking motivation. This is more just like, I feel blue. I don't know why I feel blue. And at the same time, there might be a sense that we have no time to feel. It can be quite hard to connect with ourselves at this time. Maybe we're feeling a little bit more like shut off or unable to access our, our the depths of our emotions. Um, again, a time for um, experiencing a greater loneliness or a lack of connection. I'd also add to this placement, also a great time for therapy. Maybe all of these are great times for therapy. Um, all right, now let's move on to Saturn Mercury aspects. Uh, Mercury in the Earth signs, the water signs, um, not Virgo, um, and I'd also include Mercury in Pisces as well. So this could be really great for gaining a more focused or disciplined mind. So any kind of tasks during this period where like writing a book, I mean, seriously, like <laughs> it takes something and it um, is a great time if you've got Saturn in a harmonious aspect to your natal Mercury. Doing things with great precision or that take, you know, um, a great attention to detail, um, serious discussions and negotiations and debates, things that are very deep and meaningful and also require, require maybe a lot of research as well. It's also a good time for long term plans and commitments, long time, um, long time, long term uh, periods of, of study as well. Now let's look at Saturn in the square and opposition aspects to Mercury. So Mercury in the uh, mutable signs. We might experience a lot more self-doubt in our thoughts, um, greater anxiety. I would say like moon Saturn aspects are more like depression, uh, moon uh, Saturn Mercury a little bit more like on the anxiety end of the spectrum. We can experience miscommunication and an inability to express or communicate something. Maybe we're feeling something, but we're unable to put words to it. And that is frustrating over this period. It can be a time of ending contracts, breaking commitments. It's quite a good time for more focused solo work rather than teamwork, I would say. I think a lot could be um, confused or miscommunicated when we try to work with lots of people during this time. Um, communicating to a larger audience can be challenged in that way. People might just like not get what we're talking about, really. Now let's look at Saturn in aspect to natal Venus, starting with the lovely Earth and water signs. This is where Saturn will be in a trine or a sextile to these places. So harmonious um, aspects. And you can also consider Saturn and you can also consider Venus and Pisces as well. Okay, so Venus in the water signs or earth signs barring Virgo, we're looking at long-term commitments in relationships. Really nice um, for that if you if you want to do that with, with your partner, significant others. It can also relate to meeting somebody new. So new relationships forming, but relationships that might uh, have something like an age gap. So um, one partner being older or younger, as well as um, potential for uh, like health challenges uh, of one partner so that there is a sense of added burden or responsibility on them. Again, not necessarily a bad thing, just um, just a factor. Knuckling down on a creative artistic project or, or a sort of aesthetic project, maybe something where you're like beautifying the home. Um, it can be a great time for closet clear outs, a revamping of our style. But maybe before we do that, we have to like get rid of a lot of stuff. Um, wearing black on that note would also be a thing. And I think it's a positive thing, as you can tell. Um, now let's look at Venus in the mutable signs where Saturn will be square or opposition to Venus. So this is kind of tougher in love and romance, for sure. We can experience delays, setbacks in relationships. We might need extra reassurance from loved ones. You know, one partner may be feeling more insecure in this time and more disconnected. The other might be feeling a bit disinterested, a bit bored. 
either way, this transit can say that our love life, our relationships might need a little bit of extra work, um, extra effort, extra commitment. If we want to see them out uh, for the long run. Um, but Saturn does reward that. Saturn rewards the hard work. So don't fear, fear that with Saturn. Don't fear the reaper. Um, all right, now let's look at Saturn in aspect to natal Mars. So starting with Mars in the um, Earth and water signs, Saturn in sextile or trying to Mars could be doing the hard work and getting a kick out of it, particularly if Mars is in a Scorpio or Capricorn, we're going to get a really uh, nice boost to our work ethic. A sense of patience combined with determination. So, you know, you've got Saturn bringing the patience, Mars bringing the determination, unwavering ambition. It's really good for sticking to a new fitness regime or simplifying an existing one or anything like physical that we're like kind of trying to learn, trying to master. Um, sticking something out, doing the hard work. It's 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 a pretty hard ass, like kind of boot camp kind of feeling to it. Now, if you have Mars in the mutable signs, Gemini, Virgo, or Sag, this is one of the more difficult transits here. This is classically thought of as the foot on the gas pedal, as well as the foot on the brake. Um, frustration, in other words, a thwarted will or thwarted desire. Um, it can speak to authority figures, especially men or fathers who may be involved in some kind of conflict. And we may be encouraged to find healthy ways to channel pent up anger because it could be quite um, detrimental to our like physical well-being, mental well-being if we don't find like healthy outlets for that in this time. All right, now let's take a look at Saturn in aspect to natal Jupiter, starting with Jupiter in the Earth signs, the water signs, barring Virgo. Okay, so these are the nice sextiles and trines that Ju um, Saturn will make to Jupiter. Uh, and I'd also include you know, Jupiter and Pisces as well. So this is a really fun one. It's super bold bravado, a can-do attitude combined with that kind of overall sense of like a seriousness there's a seriousness it's like it's the grand vision combined with the sort of steely determination really great for committing to a religious path or a path of study something where um you know we almost have like a commitment to to, to daily actions on this and um and there is a sense of sacrifice involved Really good for setting your sights on a long-term vision, a big audacious one, and making up your mind to achieve it and put in the necessary hard work. This is a big transit and it's one that, um, you know, you can see, you'll be able to see the fruit of in, in years to come. It's good for starting ventures with long-term goals, a business venture, home renovation, um, and so on. With Jupiter in the mutable placements, so Gemini, Virgo, and Sag, we are looking at a bit of a harder transit. Saturn will be in a square or in opposition to these places. So this could be reflected in financial hardship. If Jupiter normally brings like abundance and um, gains there, this can be the opposite. So um, kind of like bigger financial problems. A, necess a necessary limit on indulgences or the finer things in life. So again, just kind of being a bit like put under the, um, under the cosh a little bit when it comes to what we'd where we'd normally be quite expansive, Saturn is asking us to contract effectively. Can also reflect, <laughs> reflect can also reflect limits or endings on things that naturally um, they haven't served us. So let's say take addictions or sugar. I remember um, a friend of mine ditched sugar when Saturn was square there, Jupiter. So I thought that was a a really good one. There might be a feeling of a heaviness, a sense, sense there's not much fun or levity, um, we might have to kind of factor that in a bit more. So if you want to have fun with Saturn, like opposite or square your natal Jupiter, you've got to plan that fun. It's not just going to happen on its own accord. It might take extra effort um, to find that joy. Now, I'm going to finish with Saturn in aspect to natal Saturn. So if you have Saturn in the earth signs or water signs, barring Virgo, um, this would be a really good time to reflect on your progress with any long-term plans, any life goals in general. Uh, you might be drawn to reflecting on the last few years. So worth looking back to the last Saturn return or Saturn opposition you had um, and reflecting on, you know, what has kind of bloomed in that time. 
It's also a time of reckoning. You know, what have you done with the time that you've had? And what does that mean for the time ahead? Of course, this will feel more positive with the more harmonious aspects like the sextiles and the trines, um, and less so when we get to these squares and oppositions. But good time for just reflect, like quite a solemn reflection and adjusting uh, life accordingly. It can be a sense of, um, yeah, coming to terms with that that element of time. How much time do you have left? What are you doing with your time? Um, next, we'll look at Saturn in the mutable signs. So Gemini, Virgo, and Sagittarius. And this is the harder transit that Saturn will make. This can really be a time of, um, it could come with some depression, you know, a bit of like, woe is me. I haven't made as much of my life as I'd like. But equally, that can bring this, this brilliant clarity that I go on about with Saturn, clarity that wouldn't have come through otherwise. As we know, um, you know, oppositions are of the nature of Saturn, the squares are of the nature of Mars. And yet they have a sense that they are pushing us to um pushing us towards something. And I think this these Saturn squares and oppositions will really push us towards uh some really great, meaningful next steps. So um, you know, yes, you can sit around for the next two and a half years moping about the state your life is in, or you can use that energy or even the lack of energy there to channel into making something of the time that you have left. And I do think with Saturn and Pisces, meaning, deep meaning is at the core to all of this um, and how we can really make a difference in the world. It can also be a time for increased pressures and responsibilities, kind of like good on the surface, like job promotions, new babies, or or they could be difficult on the surface, helping an aging parent, dealing with an illness. Either way, it calls on us to step up, to carry our load, to do the work. Um, and there's a great book that I have to recommend, particularly for these Saturn, Saturn aspects called Do the Work by Stephen Pressfield. It's really great for, I think, just any like hard Saturn transits, um, but especially of like if you're interested in creative um, activities, if, you have a, if you're a business owner, if you, just, if you have a, a dalliance on the side that you want to um, see take flight in the next couple of years, read Do the Work by Stephen Pressfield. Okay, well, I think that's the that's a lot. Um, I hope that was helpful. If you found this video helpful, this quick run through of Saturn in aspect to natal planets, please like this video. I also invite you to subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. Uh, you can also find my work on catroseastrology.com where you will find my astrology consultations, my online community, my shop with my books and courses and much more. I hope that was helpful. Happy uh, Saturn through Pisces. I, uh, let me know in the comments below what planets natally will Saturn be an aspect to. It'd be interesting to find out from you all. All right. Thank you for watching as always, and I will catch you next time. Bye.